Hey folks, it's Simon here. Welcome to your Daily Tower video for Friday the 10th of May 2024. Uh, a couple of days ago I recorded a video explaining why I was giving the benefit of the doubt to the Bulls against uh, what seems to be a fairly predominantly bearish atmosphere. And look, my view hasn't changed. I'm, I'm not saying I'm wildly bullish on the market here right now, but I tend to think the market is more likely to continue to climb a wall of worry than uh, sort of roll over and die in, in the next day or two. And there's a couple of reasons why I say that. Uh, the first thing to realize is that the S&P 500, which is the chart we've got on here now, it's less than 1% from an all-time high. Okay, if we can rally 0.96 of a percent, we'll be, we'll be at a new all-time high. Um, Fibonacci levels, I've mentioned these in previous videos, can give a useful little roadmap. And let me just flesh these out a little bit. I'll just add a few more levels here. Now... With equities, the 61.8% level is kind of your big level. 78.6 is also a valid FIB level. Now, we've got one close above that level. All right, we get to two closes above this level, two consecutive closes above 78.6. And the high that these FIBs were drawn from becomes your target, becomes a high probability target. What does high probability mean? Well, it's probably got a 70% chance of getting there. And, you know, those are, those are very good odds in trading. Now, again, it doesn't mean we go there in a straight line. And I just want to highlight the VIX for a moment. So the VIX here, 13.8, it's not showing any signs of stress whatsoever. But it is back at support. All right, you, you look at where VIX has found support really all year. It's been at this level or, you know, maybe even marginally below that level. But what happens when the VIX doesn't have any further to fall? Well, it usually tends to rise. And what happens when the VIX rises? Well, the S&P usually sells off a little bit. But if we remain in a volatility regime like we had in the first quarter, where the VIX, I'm just looking at VIX futures here, remains between, say, 14 and 16, chances are these pullbacks will be small, all right? Sort of 2 2.5% kind of variety. So we could very well get one of those sneaky little pullbacks in the near future, but uh, the way I'm seeing things pan out at the moment, that would be an opportunity to buy the dip rather than uh, a time to get uh, really scared. And look, there's a couple of catalysts for some volatility next week. Uh, this week was a very data light week. Uh, next week is a little bit different. We've got uh, PPI on Tuesday and we've got CPI and retail sales on Wednesday. Now, given Powell's dovishness at the FOMC presser recently, I think we'd need to see inflation figures come in above sort of where they printed previously. So if it comes in, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, I think the market can probably step over that uh, because he all but took the prospect of rate heights off the table. Uh, but certainly if we got month-on-month uh, -month prints at, say, you know, over 0 0.4, uh, that could send the market into a little bit of a panic in the short term, and, and that's certainly what could cause a, a pullback. That's the moment. That's what I got for you for this week. I hope you have a lovely weekend, and I'll catch you on Monday. Thank you.